Oh, wait. I, I'm going to grab a drink. I'll be back in like 20 seconds. All right. Well, you got 20 second intro. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear him cracking those beers. That sounded like a LaCroix. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Seattle's number one comic book podcast. This is the podcast that is dedicated to the first issue of your next favorite next comic. favorite comic. Episode 89, I'm Larry. I'm James. And welcome, James. Welcome. My favorite, my, uh, my favorite college favorite kid. Favorite co-host? My favorite co-host college kid. James is, oh, uh, yeah. back in school. How is that going? Back in, back in school. Uh, it's good. I'm learning to, I'm gonna, learning's good, right, Larry? Learning is good. And James, I got something on tap that I didn't even know, uh, uh, was from Bellingham. But oh, I, what? but I always like to open the show and like, oh, I'm like, what am I drinking? What are you drinking? Yeah. And I am I'm drink- drinking a, oh, I'm drinking a squirt with a splash of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and a squirt. I love squirt. What is that called? What are you gonna call that, James? It's it's like a grapefruit soda. Grapefruit. So- I like Not it. Something. I am drinking Kalshan, Kulshan. Oh, Kulshan. Brewery, which is probably steps from the dorm. Oh uh, yeah, very close. I'm not in the dorm. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, so yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I, I had uh, some of these left over from uh, uh, somebody brought these to my birthday party a couple weeks ago, and uh, this one's called Kittens Mittens. And the oh, first, the first one, cute name. yeah, it's cute. And it's pretty, it's pretty wintry. It's it's dark ale. Um, and the first one I opened was a little flat, and I was like, oh, that doesn't seem right. And so I opened up the other one, and it was flat too. So I think oh, that's no. a style. They're, they're, it's a flat. It's a flat beer. It's a flat. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. <laughs> it's a flat stout. Yeah, we had this special beer. It's very flat. It's delicious. I guess if it's a stout. That's kind of in the direction, but yeah. So yeah, it didn't have yeah. a a psh, fizz. So there you go. This that's is interesting. This is on. Um, actually, uh, there are two breweries. One is I had it dialed up here. There are two breweries. One is on uh, uh, Kentucky Street. You know where that is, James? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kentucky Street. Been there many times. And the other <laughs> one is on James Street. <laughs> oh, sweet. I know so, James Street. Yeah, so you know where you'll be drinking. <laughs> there you go. All right. So welcome to the show. Sweet. Should we uh, dive right in? And Happy New Year. Yes, we are diving into and classic. Happy New Year. Uh, Yusaji Yojimbo. Yojimbo. And Some people call me Jimbo. Is that right? Yeah, my dad, dad used to call me Jimbo. <laughs> That's cute. This is this is Jimbo a... the Jimboree clown. <laughs> wow, mm. you just said that, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm you gonna remember that. that. <laughs> you know that reference? No. Oh, it's a thing. It's a thing from my deep childhood. <laughs> I'm not even really sure what it is. I, I think it's just something your dad called you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Maybe. So tonight we're anyway, talking about we're talking about Yojimbo this time. We're talking about Usagi Yojimbo, and this was written and drawn by Stan Sakai, published by Dark Horse in 1986. Did I get all yeah, that right, James? School. Looks good to me. Yeah, it's old school stuff, and um, and it's classic. So was it called classic when it first came out? No, it must have been all new. Oh, it's called all new Usagi Yojimbo. Yeah, so this is this is this comic book has been going on since eighty six, and I am going to stay with it. Spoiler alert, because oh, you mean it, that seems like a lot of issues. Well, a lot of these are free on Comicsology since eighty six. Well, uh, I don't know <laughs> how many. I, you think that's a lot? That's like thirty years. It's probably like 250 issues. That's a, you can do it. I believe in you, Larry. Well, they read so, um, I, I'm not going to say that they read easily because there is, there's some subtleties. Yeah, I'd say it takes a long time to read it. Yeah. 
Um, so this is 40, 40 <laughs> 45 pages. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's so long that we're not even, we decided not to even cover the back third of the issue. Yeah, this is three, uh, three stories in one, uh, issue. Mm hmm. And, packed it in. And, and yeah, they really packed it in and they packed in so much and, and, and so much great, uh, storytelling and visual that James and I decided to make this a two episode, uh, comic. There we go. Mix so, up the format a little bit. Mix up the format a little bit. So James, uh, let's jump into this because I, I thought, yeah, jump. Let's make some, uh, uh, rabbit. <laughs> let's go down this rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> All right. So, um, it's a, it's a samurai story. It's our, uh, it's a gunslinger, you know, or, uh, you know, the lonesome cowboy. He's actually a samurai though. He's actually a, a Ronin, right? That's uh -huh. what you said. Um, he's a, a samurai without a master going from town to town, uh, looking for a new adventure, a new damsel in distress, a new, uh, demon to destroy. I always think it, of it, it as the A team, <laughs> but it's the, the A team. Single person like, A team. I like to think of it as, uh, like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, this He's is probably the person I think of the most. Yeah, this is the, the, the lone wolf, the lone rider. Riding into, riding into town. Man, um, and... but it's a, it's a great way to do short stories. And we've seen it with a couple other westerns. Uh, we, like with, uh, Scalped. Uh huh. You get kind of a similar type of story arc. Jonah Hex comes into Jonah town. Hex. He's a, he's, he's a gun for hire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, the, there's, you know, but, but with this, I think the ground is, but this is classic because it's actual, the samurai, it's the actual Ronin. Right. And this is actually, uh, um, but what's our twist, Larry? The twist is that this is during the Udu regime and all of the characters in this are anthro Pomorphic animals and our hero. It's animals. It's animals. It's animals. I love it. And our hero <laughs> is a rabbit named Usagi. Yeah. So he's a rabbit and he's got like his ears tied up almost like a, in a, a samurai bun. And, uh, he's got the, the yellow swords. It's the front, the front cover almost has like a, uh, a kill bill type vibe to it. Oh, the front cover is amazing. Can, yeah. you, can you see what I mean with like the blacks and the yellows and the it, Japanese style? Yeah, Japanese style throughout. And that's what we're definitely going to be talking about because this art is so and I, I clean. Kind of, I said yellow on the f cover. That's the only color there is. It's all black and white on the inside. Yeah, it's a black and white comic on the inside and very dense. You're right, it's clean. I almost think we should talk about the art first on this issue, Larry. I just want to talk about the art. I mean, like, I love this story. <laughs> I love, love, love this story. I love all the characters. I love um, the voices that the characters have, and we'll definitely get into that. But this art mm -hmm. is so, so good. I can't believe I waited so long to read any of this. This is my first, first reading. It does in. seem like something if you're walking through a comic book store and you're just like, hey, I haven't read some stuff. Like, like if I'm doing it, I just want to open a book up and be like, does it look cool or like does it grab me and this book totally would right right so you get a lot of the classic japanese style of uh of art here you see a lot of the architecture is definitely japanese the 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 snow when they draw it when when stan draws the snow mm -hmm. in those big round circles coming down it's just gorgeous and then the line the line is the same size Wherever you look at it, like it's a, it's a, it's just this nice, thick, clean line that doesn't vary. Like it's just very, uh, it stays the same thickness. Like the brushes. Okay. He's yeah. Just, he's I just using one nib, you know, like that's, I, I wouldn't have thought to look for that aspect, but that, yeah, he, you're totally right. And it just, it just works so well. So we, so we meet our hero walking into, uh, uh, um, wait, but I want to go, so then, like, also the costume, but then there's the whole aspect of taking animals and anthropomorphizing them and 
we've read a couple different comics that have done a pretty good job of this in the past. But, like, I kind of want to compare and contrast a little bit here and kind of sit and talk about this. Because, like, what we, we've we read, like... Um, Autumn Lands Autumn is the Lands. one that comes to my mind, yeah. Yeah, that was one I thought I was thinking of. Um, Fable, I guess. Oh, is yeah, kind of, sure. It's the bigger name one that I remember. Um, e- even... Uh, Sweet Tooth. Uh, Sweet Tooth, great, great example. Um, it's it, it's a pretty it's almost its own comic book category. There's a there's a lot of examples. I don't have my list. I was just about to pull up my list to see if I could come up with more names. Um, I think even in the what was the Lewis and Clark one? We kind of we saw it with those. Oh, uh, with the with the buffalo. Yeah, characters. with that buffalo character. Um, but I think that ha- like I, this might be our first black and white one that has it. But it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's definitely more animal than human. I, I, um, like he almost, like our main bunny character almost looks like the Trixus for kids rabbit. <laughs> he does. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? He really does. And he's got some great facial expressions and he, um, and, uh, we see one on his like first words out of his mouth introducing himself and, uh, uh, but, uh, um, I see, like, have you ever been to, uh, the, the, um, Asian market, uh, Wajamaya? Oh, Wajamaya. And you go into the, like, just everything, like, yeah, all. Yeah, go into any aisle. It, go into <laughs> any aisle and, like, the characters on the boxes and the, and the art on those boxes and, 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 uh, um, mm. you, you just see that, like, there's, there's an Asian style. And they, I, they do. It is a different style for sure. Yeah, and and we're not doing it. It's 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 an Asian style. It's there's no way to describe it other than like, I mean, like it's just because it, it's a big category. Yeah, it just looks so great. And there's a little bit of a uh, uh, Japanese writing down the side here. I think he's written his name mm-hmm. in Japanese, and then he's also written it in, you know, English, so we can imagine what that that Japanese writing means. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It looks cool. It just yeah, looks great. And, and um like uh it stays very true to like it, even like the plot of the story is a very like classic type of story. Like oh. I, it's not one I've specifically heard before, but I could totally imagine it being in a collection of short stories that I Well, I've read. I think that these are actually from Japanese uh folklore. Oh, okay. Yeah, it totally reads like that. And and it does because let's get into it. Um, so the first, the first story is about, he's, um, he's kind of just the wandering samurai who's, or, well, yeah, he's, he's just a wandering samurai looking for shelter for the night. And he goes to a place and they invite him in to share a rice bowl, right? Yeah. So Sitting it's just on the floor in front of the thing. It's just one, of, it's just one woman who lives in this, uh, just an old, old lady. I can't really even. What animal would you say she is? I think she is an old cat. Yeah, I thought she was an old cat. Yeah, and she's got a friendly demeanor to her, and they swap some stories. And this is where we learn that Yosaji. And this is actually the first pan. Like this, it's only the second page, but like when he tells his story, and he's standing on the side of the panel, and the rest of the panel is like war, war in the rain. Like that's you. It's almost like its own art, a, a different type of art style laid over it. Like it, there's almost a different kind of action art. Oh, I know. You done. could like you could put your eye right into that and just stare at it. There's horses because you know these there's animals. There's a lot are, going on. There's in a that lot panel. going on. There's a lot of weaponry flashing and 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 the rain is coming down. And there's traditional. It makes it very chaotic. And like the rest of the panels are all very. They're not like really simple because there's a lot of shading going on but comparatively they're very like there's a there's panels where the background is just white right yeah and that's a, that's a, that's that 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 japanese art just comes through like that too and and and, and may, maybe i'm reading too much into it because you know he has um like ev- like all the details are there he has he's wearing i don't know if a, and like classic a, asian style not like anime style what yeah. we're talking about japanese yeah. So when when like uh when when you see the rabbit our our hero he's got um 
I don't know if you'd call it a kimono. I don't know what the heck that is. Like the the traditional robes of the samurai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I think kimono. And it's got it's this gear gi. 